everything you need to know about products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on CL 650. And this time around, it's Strata Life, where we have our experts here talking about Strata Living. We have uh, Drew Grout from Key Pacific Property Management, Gordon Lai from CMW Insurance, and uh, Randy Gordon from Ashton Services uh, a Service Group. Uh, now, Gordon, it's your, your turn here. We're going to talk a bit about insurance and buildings, and a lot of people maybe don't realize the importance of this because you have all kinds of different levels of insurance in a building. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, the question, the first question to you is, my strata is pursuing a course of action that is in violation of municipal bylaws and regulations. Are the council members still covered by strata insurance against a legal challenge arising from this decision? I'm not sure what that would be, but uh, if they go outside the, the, the city's bylaws, what yes. happens there? Well, if you break the law, you're going to get in trouble. And yeah. um, I don't know if there's any insurance in this world that would provide coverage for that. It would be like, you know, yeah, I was speeding. You caught me. Here's your $1,000 fine. Give me the fine. I got insurance. Well, no insurance company is going to insure you for that. So in, in general, the answer is that, you know, any ch legal challenge or any fines that's going to relate to it, it's not going to be covered by insurance. It's it's the, um, you know, the strata or the strata council that's made that choice, and they're going to have to take on that responsibility themselves. I guess the, you could also say, well, why isn't somebody calling out the strata and saying this is not against the law? I mean, Drew, Drew like, I, could, I, I mean, mean, this is against the law. Or you could call City Hall and say, by the way, this strata is going to do something or they're trying to plan something that's outside the bylaw of the city. Yeah, I, um, you know, recently uh, things that are, um, um, could fall into that area, uh, which are topical, are the whole issue about rentals and municipalities. Um, oh, like Airbnb? Airbnb is oh, a good right. example. Um, uh, now, I know there are strata buildings that have um, these Airbnb units because I've looked for a room someone was coming to visit and there was no, there were no hotel rooms. That was during the Women's World Cup soccer here. Was it a year ago? Last, yeah. last summer, right? There were no hotel rooms anywhere in the city. The only places that had uh, rooms were Airbnbs, and these, these were in condo units downtown Vancouver, and they're all strata. So yeah. people are doing that now. It's... it's um, don't quote me, but it's my understanding that Vancouver doesn't um, uh, allow Airbnbs. Unless mm. you're licensed with a bed and breakfast. Yeah, so if a strata... But that's really hard to get, and I know that because my neighbors used to run a bed and breakfast, and it was there was quite a few ho hoops to go through to get yeah. that yeah. license. Yeah. 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 See, there are stratas that have a strata-owned suite, could have been a caretaker suite in the past, and they've decided to rent it out. And that's not uncommon. Uh, you know, it becomes a rental unit for the strata. And in, in, the, in the more normal terms of rental, you have somebody who signs a lease for one year, two years, three years even. Uh, but w what's going on now, if a strata per se uh, w wanted to uh, turn it into an Airbnb, and that was contrary to the municipal bylaws, and they knew that, and they proceeded along that avenue anyways, and somebody brought suit against them, because that's really when the problem, that the city says, hey, close it down, or somebody bring suit against them because maybe they were subject to penalties or fines and the owner says, well, why should I pay that? You made the wrong decision. That's when I think the situation yeah. is the insurance wouldn't protect them against such a... No, it wouldn't. A, a suit. And that's what I think, you know, the council or the, the you know, the, I would say, well, the council for sure should really understand there's no insurance coverage for that. And what is worse, being on a strata council is that they have to understand that it's not just a strata corporation that would be responsible, which they can be pers found personally re responsible for this. So, you know, you make a decision. It's no different than your own home. If you decide to rent out, you know, five of your bedrooms to Airbnb and you get caught, the fine comes. Okay, I've, I've got a scenario for you. Say you have a, a, a unit in a condo downtown because it's desirable holiday destination, people coming to Vancouver. And you and you rent it out for a couple hundred bucks a night, yeah. and you've been doing that. And someone comes as a guest, staying at your Airbnb, and they have a fire, and the fire spreads to out of your unit into the common structure, and it's found out that that was a a, a visitor to the city that rented an Airbnb yes. and caused this fire. So is now the insurance for the building not going to cover that? It would. We would provide the coverage for the insurance for the physical damage would because that's a strata corporations. Mm -hmm. And so probably what would happen is, you know, the deductible get applied. My guess would be the strata council would, would probably assess the deductible back to the unit owner and say, hey, it came out of your unit. And by the way, we found out you got this short-term rental Airbnb. It's not allowed and, you know, maybe find them. 
it's it's more so the insurance we're talking about is the liability, legal liability of the financial cost related to the lawsuit or the investigation and possibly fines mm-hmm. that the strata corporation um, slash directors and officers would face through the municipalities because mm-hmm. of break of you know. So if there was a if the city came and levied a fine against the building for having this, then there you're not covered, is what you're saying. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. It says I'm a strata council member and my strata as well. Uh, sorry, I'm a strata council member of my strata as well. I sit on some subcommittees. How am I protected under the strata's insurance policy? That's basically lifting off where we just talked about. That's right. So that would fall under the directors and officers. So when we have a directors and officers liability policy, um, in the strata that's included in the strata policy, um, in the wording it extends to including subcommittees, mm-hmm. right? So and you know a lot of stratas will have more you know strata council and then subcommittee could be for landscaping it, you have a subcommittee for i don't know um all sorts of different things all, all yeah, yeah, different all things yep. that people are involved in and those subcommittees is still considered coverage under the directors and officers liability again oh. provided you don't break laws or regulation knowingly that you know that are, you are there are there stratas that don't have this level of coverage or do some some councils um, go without having uh directors uh, insurance from my experience we we do see that because it's the Directors and officers' liability insurance is not required on the Strata, Corp, uh, Strata Property Act. It's just a it, in the Strata Property Act. It's optional. So we have seen, um, you like know, like taking collision on your car, you go without yes, it. You correct. Pay, you face the consequences. At right? CMW, you wouldn't see that. We don't offer that. As, it's part of the package that's right. included. But you know, people could buy the insurance from other brokers or other places, and and. I would think, I, from what I see, most brokers that under that understand the BC Strata Act would include that and say that's part of the package. But we do see, oddly, you know, this insurance policies that don't have this. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and there's exceptions where, for example, it could be a duplex and a guy go, well, do we really need this? It's just two of us, just right? Just two of us, right? So we don't want this. But I have seen, you know, 20-unit stratas, no directors and officers liability. And my comment is you're crazy not to get that. You know, so for a few couple hundred bucks, three hundred yeah, bucks. A question for clarity: um, Would the suit th- for for the Strata Council member to be protected? Would this does the suit have to name the Strata Council member, or is it a Strata suit? It generally needs to name the council. Yeah, so it protects the individuals involved in making decisions, Correct. as opposed to somebody suing the Strata for whatever. Correct. Okay. Correct. We 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 kind of put this in the general as kind of like a non-profit directors and offers coverage. No different if you volunteer, um, you know, for a charity yeah. work as a director's officer and, you know, you make decisions. It happens you get sued. There should be some coverage for you through this yeah. director's and officer's uh, liability policy. Yeah. All right. The next question. I know our Stratus Insurance has deductibles. Under what circumstances would I be responsible for some um, of or all of these deductibles, how can I protect myself? So I guess this is something's happened to the building, and then you're like you said, uh, the the strata says, okay, you you have to pay the deductible. So how do you protect yourself, and and where does it begin and end? Um, the best way to protect yourself is you need to buy. So whether you live there or rent out the unit, you need to buy your own personal insurance. So if you live there, you buy a you know a ten um, condominium package that includes you know property liability and then in there it'll cover the deductible if you rent it out then it's a rented condominium policy that includes rent to income covered some of the contents like so you're saying you can buy insurance that covers this it deductible yes oh, okay yes and and what's more importantly it's sometimes there's a big component that um, maybe i'll elaborate to is that we have earthquake this like earthquake exposure in british mm-hmm. columbia and in the event of an earthquake that earthquake deductible applies and usually it's 10 to 15 percent of the sum insured so if you have a hundred million dollar high-rise building that's 10 million dollar deductible well that deductible would be assessed back to each unit owner probably um through basically um well as part of the strata mm-hmm. someone's got to pay for it and the strata is yep, yep. not going to it. so you could get protection for that too so it's really? not only you mm-hmm. know for things that you may be responsible for but it could be deductible where you're not really responsible for, but you're responsible by the fact that you're a unit owner. Right. Yeah, that would be a pretty large. Uh, yeah, and sort th- of th- those when you claim. divide it up, it could be you know twenty to thirty, forty thousand yeah. um, dollar assessments. I think normally we see chargebacks by a strata 
uh, for a, um, an overflowing sink or a pipe leak within a unit or dishwasher um, or the person's so That's typically your 500 or $1,000 deductible? No. On, the, in a on, a, on a strata, deduct, the standard deductible, like the lowest, you would see a thousand for what okay. we call all loss. Right. But water damage and sewer backup typically is five thousand. Wow. Like Ten, twenty, thirty, twenty. Four. Some stratas have had so many of those incidents yeah. that uh, have a fifty thousand deductible yeah. or a hundred thousand deductible. You become self-insured at that point. Yeah. So we, that's great advice. So make sure if you own a unit, either you live in it or you rent it out, get an insurance policy that covers you for. Deductible for the stratas insurance. Yes. So that's a great piece of advice. So you're saying it was a five thousand dollar. That's a big yeah. check to write. Oh, and that's a that's like a small deductible from what we see. So right. definitely, you know, you ask for a copy of the strata policy, look at the deductible, bring it to the broker, whoever you're going to get this insurance from, and say, look, I need these deductibles covered off. That's a great piece of advice. Yeah. Worth tuning into the show just for that. <laughs> you could save yourself a lot of money <laughs> oh, if yes. anything ever happened. All right, we're uh, we're talking next about maintenance to your building, and we're going to put um, uh, Randy Gordon on the hot seat. He's a little nervous. His first time doing the radio show. You look so calm now, Randy. Well, you know, <laughs> we're doing the best we can. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk about uh, you know maintenance in your building uh, from uh, Ashton Service Group next on Strata Life here on CL650. There's still more ahead with experts on call on CL650.